John? It's my friend's account. I'm going to see him. Oh, okay. I have you going to 522 Westlake Avenue? That's right. You visiting your friend? I am. Have you been doing this long? A few years. I assume you like it. It's not bad. You and John doing anything fun today? Not really fun. I've been going through a lot lately and it all kind of piled up today, so I thought talking to him might help. It's on days like these, you really know who your friends are. Yeah, he's always been a great friend. Can never have too many of those. You're Christian? Progressive Christian. What's the difference? I follow God's plan. I try to spread his word when I can. I don't hate the sinner. When I see somebody on the path of wrongdoing, I simply try to help. Do you read scripture? Mm, I went to church as a kid, but not so much these days. Sorry to hear that. Hope you find your way back soon. They'd have to change some of their beliefs before that happens. Like what? The church has a long tradition of getting issues drastically wrong and being on the wrong side of history. And the people who blindly believe the Bible's teachings have done an incredible amount of damage in the name of God, especially to the LGBTQ community. Sometimes I think the damage is done by people who love to sin more than they love God. We all have free will, the choice to do what's right. But you're right, the church has gotten a few things wrong. There are ways to repair the damage, though. How so? You don't have to talk about this. Drivers aren't supposed to engage in religious or political talk with riders. I'm the one bringing it up. I don't mind discussing opposing views especially on a long taxi ride. Besides, we might learn something from each other. It's becoming all too common these days. Society approves of a behavior God clearly condemns. We're natural sinners. We don't need to be taught how to sin. We need to be taught how to fight sin. Conversion therapy, brainwashing, shaming, execution. Is that how you fight sin? Different cultures have different methods of correcting a condemned behavior that doesn't make the behavior right. Just another dead fag to you, I'm sure. Oh, not at all. All life is precious and needs to be cherished. Whenever I hear about a homosexual passing away, I pray that he knew God and what the Bible teaches. As long as he repented before he died, his sins will be forgiven. Your prayers aren't going to stop the cruelty being done to good people, kind people, innocent people. I think correcting the behavior varies from person to person. You can't invent a God that fits into your life. You have to invent a life that fits into God's plan. I just assumed God's plan was to love one another. It is, it is, and to stand with each other and with God. Once someone is committed to what the Bible teaches and doing God's work, blessings will fall into place. What if they don't believe in the same God as you? I believe in a just, fair God, a God that is forgiving, regardless of if you sin. What other kind of God is there to believe in? A God who wants us to be happy, regardless of other people's prejudices? I, and that's the God I believe in, then. I'm on your side. I'm glad you're on my side. Sure. We're all one, as long as we're one with God, right? I don't think so. This we are one crap as you're invading another person's way of life isn't going to change how the LGBTQ community is treated. I mean, you say you don't judge, but isn't interfering in someone else's life a judgment? Temptation is put in front of us to test God's trust in us. Being a Christian means that I want you to live in God's kingdom for all eternity. And being a good Christian means I'll do what I can to make sure that happens. As if you're never tempted by anything? Of course I am. 
my temptation was smoking. Yeah, I used to smoke a pack a day, if I'm being honest. It took me several tries to quit. Five, to be exact. I would start a new pack and think, get through this and no more. But it's when you're down to your last cigarette, that's when temptation creeps in. Well, I wasn't aware that smoking is against the Ten Commandments. We need to follow more than just the Ten Commandments. Our bodies are God's temple. Smoking, like any other sin, disrespects this temple. Our bodies are ours to do what we want with. That's what free will is. If I want to smoke or get tattoos and piercings, that's my free will. That's my choice because it's my body. I fear the whole world's starting to believe you on that. Free will can also be an obstacle. In my case, smoking challenged God's love for me. Thankfully, with the help of my friends, I was able to quit for good. Now, whenever I see a friend or gosh, someone I don't know, doing something that challenges God's love for them, I intervene. I show them the way to keep God's love. This thing you call love, God's love, that isn't love. It's religious fanatics trying to control another person's life by instilling fear. A lamp for my feet and a light for my path. That's in Psalms. We're all supposed to be lights illuminating the way to God's path. It's like luminaries along the road at night. They're beautiful when they're all lit up, but if one goes out, that's when darkness creeps in. That's what happens when we sin. Our light goes out. If I were to witness sin and not intervene, that makes me no better than the sinner. I'm just another light missing from God's path. I just don't see how loving another human, regardless of their sex or gender, is going against God. It's like the people who want something for nothing. You think you deserve a trust fund just because you want one, but that's not how God works. You have to earn his trust. You have to earn God's kingdom. I think some people, some Christians, take their self-proclaimed prophetic way of living and push it too far. When they hurt someone with their words or their actions, that isn't love. That isn't God. And no quote from the Bible will ever convince me of that. We've all been pushed too far when it comes to temptation. I've known friends who struggled with same-sex attraction, and I've helped show them the way back to God's teachings. You must repent and let God know you're truly sorry. No one should have to repent or be sorry for who they are. No one chooses to be gay, just like no one chooses to be straight. That's how we're born, and we're all born in God's image. Whenever I meet someone, says that they were born gay, I tell them they simply must be born again. God absolutely wants us to experience love, but that can only be shared between one man and one woman when joined in biblical marriage. One man and one woman is an abusive, archaic belief that women are property and belong to men. That's not how the world works anymore. For being a progressive Christian, that's not a very progressive way of thinking. Not everything in the Bible is literal or accurate. That is true. There's definitely things missing from the Bible. The solar system, for instance, the Bible makes no mention of planets, but they definitely exist. At least you believe in science. I believe that science tells us the how and the Bible tells us the why. I think I might be on your side there. I'm glad you're on my side. Still, the Bible tends to contradict itself. An eye for an eye versus turn the other cheek. If someone has wronged you, which teaching do you choose? God is merciful, not vengeful. I would do what he would do. Sure, you talk the talk when you need to, but you wouldn't seek an eye if yours was taken? If God wanted me to turn the other cheek, I would do it. Hmm. You wouldn't? I don't think I could. We're here. Is this where your friend lives?
Yeah. Where do I go? Um, just keep going forward. I'll tell you when to turn. Can I ask, when did he die? A year ago, today. Sorry. Uh, turn left here and then just behind that other car is fine. Do you mind waiting? Of course not. Please, take your time. It's been a long time. God, I've missed you so much. <laughs> Not a day goes by that I don't think about you or wish that you were still here. <laughs> Not a day goes by that I don't blame myself for what happened. I'm seeing a therapist, which is funny because that used to be you. You helped me with everything. She said it would help if I talked to you. If I said, out loud what happened that night. And if I apologized. <laughs> we were at Smokey Joe's and you were drinking your favorite drink, raspberry swirl. <laughs> Just next to us, Lily is dancing on the table and I've never heard you laugh so hard. Uh, your laugh was the most beautiful sound. It was late, late for me, but not for you. You made it seem like the night would go on forever just so you could live it. Oh, how I wish that were true. I asked if you were ready to go and you said, bitch, I look glamorous. Hell no, I'm staying. And I said, even a glamorous bitch can be in need. So Lily said that she would stay with you. I knew better. 
She smiles way too much when she's lying. But I left anyway. And that was the last time I saw you alive. When the bar closed and they shuffled everyone out, Lily took off with whatever guy she'd met that night. And you walked to your car alone. You thought you were alone anyway. <laughs> You were found the next morning behind a restaurant mixed in with bags of trash. You still had your wallet, so the police knew who you were. They refused to call it a hate crime, but we all knew. With no witnesses and no suspects, they stopped investigating after just a few days. Like you didn't matter. Like you didn't deserve justice. Sometimes I think if only I had stayed. If only I'd walked with you. If I'd fought for you, you would still be here. <laughs> I am so, so sorry for leaving you. I'm sorry this happened to you. I'm sorry that nothing has been done. <sighs> but I promise, I am going to make this right for you. I am going to get you justice. Talking to your friend help? It did. for you. 